Doug Shipley is the Member of Parliament for Barrie or Mojance in Springwater. And before the 2019 election, he was a city councillor, representing Ward 3 since 2010. But now he's in Ottawa, a member of the Federal Conservative Party. Now I only had 15 minutes with MP Shipley, and there was a lot I couldn't cover. Many commentators are saying it's a tumultuous time in the Conservative Party, with Aaron O'Toole polling lower than expected. And of course, there's myriad issues I could ask about in our area. But as the Conservatives and NDP specifically have uh, critiqued the Trudeau government um, and their vaccine plan through the past couple of months, how they've handled the pandemic, I wanted to touch on those issues um, specifically. As well, we spoke about MP Shipley's priorities, his role in his writings, economic recovery, and a little bit more too. It was also a chance to introduce him to Barry Community Media and talk about his support for the local journalism initiative. All right, so thank you so much for agreeing to meet with me. I, I really appreciate it and uh, great to meet you face to face. I was wondering, um, you've been involved in municipal politics for, for years in the Barrie area, um, but this is your first year in Ottawa. And I'm wondering what surprised you the most or what have you found the most interesting about uh, making the switch to federal politics? Sam, that is a long loaded question. And there's a whole huge list of things that I could tell you that are greatly different. Uh, being in municipal politics for nine years, I was very used to being uh, very hands-on, very um, independent. This takes on a totally different day-to-day uh, -day approach. This is a team approach. This is uh, part of the job to help people. So what I always liked in municipal politics was reaching out when someone had an issue, whether something small like their garbage didn't get picked up or they were having a zoning issue or there was a problem with their day-to-day -day activities, I love to get that done. I would go meet them or I'd get it done. And that was very hands-on counselor. Um, this is a little bit different. Now, during COVID, we were quite hands-on because people were stranded all over the world when it first took place. We would phone uh, different uh, embassies, airlines, trying to get people home. We were helping people hands-on. Uh, staff do most of the casework file here now where it's, it's hands-on, helping them with different, whether it be CRA issues or immigration issues or that type of thing. But it's, it's a little bit different. It's just not as hands-on. It's not as one-to-one -one, and it's not as independent. I did need to learn that, you know, it's a, it's a party approach. It's a team approach. And it's just a little bit different way of approaching things going forward. I'm enjoying it. I sometimes feel like I, I won the job, got the job, didn't really get to do it because of COVID. Uh, we're not in Ottawa as often. We're not doing a lot of the activities as we normally would. We're limited on how many people can be in Ottawa at a time. And uh, that's changed the job. I've enjoyed it. It was a big change for me, but definitely it is a, a lot different. And quite frankly, Sam, it, it, the public, a lot of the public's not completely aware of what their MP does for them. You know, a lot of people know a municipal, municipal councillor, it's your potholes, your water, your sewage, it's your day-to-day -day activities, whereas MP is a much, much broader brush. And you know, there's quite, quite a few public don't even know what we do. For sure. And there's a couple of questions I'll, I'll skip over here just to be mindful of your time. But I was wondering, um, so your party has been critical of the federal vaccine rollout and the messaging around that. And Barry has been hit hard by COVID-19, specifically in the past couple of months. Um, I, I'm wondering, what are your thoughts on the, the progress of the vaccine rollout and the messaging around that rollout? And how do you think that could change to better serve um, Barry residents and the other residents of your constituency? Sam, we all want to see vaccines come out. We all want to see everybody succeed in this. We, the only way out of this pandemic is for people to get the vaccine. So as a party, we're just there trying to make sure that Canadians get the vaccine as soon and as quickly as they can. In one word uh, or, or less, we're disappointed. We're behind. We're a G7 community. We're last in G7. I haven't checked the local standings as of late, but I know we're way down in even world uh, usage. Uh, you know, we should be up near the top. Uh, I, I believe that the Trudeau Liberal government dropped the ball on this one. They're starting to come in now, so we're, help, we're, we're hopeful, we're optimistic. This is not a partisan issue. We need people to get the vaccines. There's many, many, many countries ahead of us. Uh, we should have had it sooner, quite frankly. Some people have died because of it. People have gotten sick because of it. You know, I'm looking down at the States. Right now, they're doing about 2 million people a day. We haven't done that in three months in Canada. So we're way behind. You know, there's some countries starting to talk about opening up. Businesses can't open up until we get the vaccine out. I, I saw the other day 
the Prime Minister of England, uh, Boris Johnson, was talking about their reopening plan. We need a reopening plan, and we can't get that reopening plan until we get the injections in arms. Uh, you know, people need a light at the end of the tunnel. It's a slight one now, but we're not there yet. Um, we, we need to get rolling. We need to get back to normal. We need to get businesses open. We need to get people to be able to hug their loved ones again. We need to get, uh, you know, people need to get on with their lives. We're hearing it day to day here. People have, they've been patient. They've tried. They've done what's necessary to try to, you know, the old flatten the curve was what it started as, but to control things by social distancing. People have done their best. And now it's time to make sure that uh, we got to get the injections done so people can get back to their day-to-day -day routines. It's it's heartwarming to hear some of the good stories when people are getting it. I'm hearing some grandparents that are in tears when they're getting it because they know the light's there and they'll be able to see their grandchildren again and be able to get out and do things. So I'm only disappointed how long it's taken and the delays. It's we're, we're months behind other countries and we need to get back up. And I'll, I'll just apologize. My internet might be a little bit slow. So if I cut you off, um, that's why. But I was wondering specifically on, okay. on our area, and I'm thinking of Roberto Place's um, outbreak and other issues around the variant that are concerning in Barrie. Um, what's been your involvement in uh, speaking with people locally about the, the effect that it's had on their business or their health or these outbreaks in long-term care homes? Um, how have you been involved in the response to COVID-19 in your, in your riding? Well, Roberta Place is down in uh, Barry Innisfil. I've been talking a fair bit with John Broussard, doing anything I could do. There's not a lot I can do. It is in his area. That was just a tragic, tragic event. Uh, one of the biggest things we've been trying to do is make sure businesses are looked after and people are looked after. I'll give you an example, Sam. I, was on, I don't do a ton of social media. Um, I was on social media one night and saw a note from a woman who was struggling, who, couldn't, uh, who runs a small business, was having some issues. And I happened to see that. So I told her, please contact my office. We'll see if we can get you some help. And we did. And thanks to good staff like Aaron, who's watching in here today, we offered some good help to her and she was ecstatic. We're here to try and help businesses and people get the programs that are out there and available. Conversely, we've had to tell the government where some of the programs were lacking. Um, you know, there were some gaps along the way. One of the biggest gaps was new companies. And we really pushed in the House of Commons to make sure that new companies were covered with that. People didn't know there was a pandemic coming. Uh, whether you've been in business 10 years or, or or 10 days, they were still affected the same and they shouldn't be missed by those programs. As a, as a, for instance, if someone opened back in last January or February, they were a brand new business. Well, they didn't have a year's worth of, uh, of records to show they had lost in sales, but they were still losing their businesses. So we pushed hard in the House of Commons to make sure that the people and the businesses who were falling between the gaps got covered in that. We've been personally helping companies and people who who need the programs, who need the support. And quite frankly, Sam, sometimes lately we've just been in here to, uh, to, to talk because my fear is that now it's turning into a large mental health issue. People are lonely out there. People are needing some assistance. And sometimes we just need to be the ear they can speak to. But we're doing as much as we can. It's, it's tough times for everybody. For sure. And as you mentioned off the bat, um, in, in municipal politics, the issues and the approach you might take are much different. Um, as well as the priorities and, and things you might tackle. But I, I'm wondering in your new position, um, what are the most important short-term issues facing your riding and long-term issues um, that, that you see facing your riding? How do you want to tackle those? Well, short and long-term, our number one priority is going to be is getting out of the pandemic, getting the economy, but going and getting people back to work. It's really going to be about jobs, Sam. Health is number one, but that's coming around now with the vaccines slowly coming out. Once we finally get the health pandemic dealt with, which it will, I'm optimistic of that, it's going to be about getting the economy back on track. And without a doubt, number one is going to be getting jobs. People need good jobs to get back to working. And our party is wholly committed to making sure people can get back, get the economy going, and that there's jobs ahead of them. That's the number one thing. That, that's what's going to help people to put food on their tables, to help their mental health, to help pay their bills. That's what we're really going to have to focus on. There's a lot of people unemployed right now and going forward. We're going to have to be focused on getting people back to work and creating good jobs. I was wondering in Barrie specifically, there's a, a lot of uh, young people or people that are um, have, like surviving off a low income and they might want a job, they might get a job, but then they can't afford to live in Barrie. And affordable housing has been such a, a huge issue that's come up time and time again. Um, what's your perspective on the housing crisis facing Barrie? And are there any avenues that, that you're trying to address that problem? And I guess in your entire riding as well. Yeah, well, there hasn't been as much lately, uh, Sam, because we're dealing a lot 
a lot of things were put on the back burner, but affordable housing has got to be up there. As a city councilor for nine years, we talked about it greatly. And Mayor Lehman, we've put together a chart actually to try and get uh, more and more uh, affordable housing brought to Barry. I just saw something in the paper, whether it was today or yesterday, that rent still in Barry are, are some of the highest in Canada. And, and a lot of that comes down to supply and demand. There just isn't enough supply out there. Hopefully, with a lot of the annex lands coming on board in the south end of Barrie, when houses uh, and multi-levels of housing start to get built more, whether it be you know starter townhomes, uh, single detached homes, condos, apartments, hopefully some inventory will help ease that up a little bit. There's been a very, very shortage of all inventory of housing, which creates, you know, it's a trickle down effect and becomes more and more. If people can't afford to buy, or there is no houses to buy, even in Barry, uh, as there has been lately, you know, it's a trickle down effect. So they're coming into the rental market and causing that to raise. When there's no um, inventory, uh, it's a supply and demand and it's causing uh, rates to go way up on that. So hopefully opening some of that up, getting some building going, getting the economy back on track, Hopefully we'll get that turned around because we know it's a problem. And I'll just um, skip to a, a couple last questions I have. And um, throughout this past year and coming into the spring, there's been lots of rumors of a snap election. There's um, been con some contentious confidence votes as well. Um, speaking for yourself, what's your confidence in the Liberal government's handling of the pandemic going forward? And how would you kind of um, speak to certain constituents in Barrie that would be really um, dismissal of a snap election and say that it would uh, it, it would be just very disruptive in the time of COVID-19. That's a large question as well. No, that's <laughs> fine. Sam, quite frankly, we also think it would be very disruptive. The Conservative Party does not want a snap election. We think the pandemic needs to be dealt with first. Uh, we hear the saber rattling that Mr. Trudeau and the Liberals have been doing. They want an election. They would have gone to the polls already. We're seeing that across the country in many spots. I think you just got to look at what happened in Newfoundland to see that it's not the right time to hold an election. We do not want, uh, and we've been quite vocal with this. Our leader has said it. We do not want to do anything to cause an election. Um, it, it's not the right time. We, we're, you know, things are going along fine now. Let's let's make sure people are looked after for the pandemic. We can talk about elections down the road. I don't think the public has the appetite for the election right now. I know they're hearing a lot about it. I know the Liberals are preparing for it. I know they've instructed Elections Canada to do some prep work for it, uh, but we do not want elections. So I need to be very clear on that. Our party doesn't want it. I saw the NDP party last night on the news. Their leader, uh, Mr. Singh, came right out and said they do not want it. So really it's going to come down to whether the Liberals want it or not. And it's seeming more and more like they do. Um, I think a lot of it, in my own opinion, depends on how the vaccine rolls out, whether they'll end up calling it or not. We'll be ready to go, Sam, when they decide to have it. But uh, we are in no way uh, forcing one, wanting one, or desiring one right now. Thank you. And I'll just ask one more last question. Um, I know we only have a couple of minutes left, um, but specifically about media and news in Canada. And I suppose this is a biased question for me to be asking. Um, but the Canadian media landscape is shifting. We saw Huffington Post shut down yesterday. Um, what's your perspective on local news in Canada? And we see it it has affected Barry as well. Um, do you support the local journalism, like local journalism initiative, and and how do you want to see that move forward? Sam, even from a personal standpoint, I'll tell you one of the saddest days I had was when the old Barry Examiner closed down. I have even before I ever got into politics was a bit of a news junkie. I had a subscription to the Barry Examiner. I was, was one of the probably last few that did, and that's uh, I, I used to love getting the local paper and seeing local news, and quite frankly, even the local sports. I love reading what was going on with the local stuff, the Barry Bay Cats or the local high school football stuff. I love local stuff. That's what I actually live for. That's my that's my wheelhouse. So I think it's a very important. I, I think it's a bit of a shame the way it's going away to be more. Uh, uh, non-localized. I'm noticing even on our local news channel at night, there's less and less local content on it. There's no local sports on it any, anymore. It used to be the first, at least 15 minutes was all local stuff. It's less and less now too. I am a strong supporter of local news. I think we need to keep it strong. Unfortunately, it does appear to be going the other way. We've done our best. We're trying to put as many ads in as many local publications as we can, whether it be radio, TV, or not TV, but I wish we had that budget, radio or um, newspaper, uh, but I'm a strong supporter for local news. Would you support uh, more funding through Heritage Canada for the LJI program, more like federal funding for that? What's your perspective on that? Uh, I'd have to government? see... 
Yeah, I'd have to see what the ratio on that is uh, to some point. There has to always be a need to it. I'm a fiscal conservative. I believe in always watching taxpayers' dollars. So we'd have to see what the return could be. But something does need to be done to level the playing field for what's going on right now. Digital is taking a lot of uh, local away, and, and, and those playing fields need to be leveled up. So, Sam, whatever needs to be done, I'd be willing to look at. And, and, and if the decision was right for everybody to make that decision. Perfect. Well, thank you very much, MP Shipley. I think we just snuck in under the time there. Um, <laughs> well, and I appreciate really appreciate it. you making the time to speak. Any, to me. Anytime, Sam. It's been a pleasure. And uh, I'm sure Aaron will get this out to you too. And I'm looking forward to seeing your article. Perfect. Thank you very much and have a great afternoon. Thank you, Sam.